How's it going? Really excited today. Uh, my first go on the Open Coast Gilts this year. Finally got some conditions I can actually come out and fish in. The sea's been raging for a while and the, the rain just hasn't given up. So to get a dry day with uh, not too savage as well, I mean, it's, it's practically flat today, is uh, a bit of a blessing really. Um, ordinarily, I wouldn't like these conditions for later in the year because the water would be a lot clearer. But now, because of the time of year, the water's carrying quite a lot of colour and that is quite often good enough to get you some gilthead bites. They do like the surf, but if the water's got colour in it, you can still catch them when it's pretty flat, I've found. So um, I'm hopeful today, hopeful. <laughs> Fishing a low water mark at the moment. This is not one of my favourites and I don't really like this place at all. And that's just because I, the access is horrible. I don't feel safe, but um, I do fish it. It's got good form for early in the year. And later on, we'll go on to one of my more preferred marks for the high tide. And hopefully at some point, we'll get a few fish to show you. I've had a fish already. I've had a wrasse. Um, I've had a few bites as well. They're very finicky though. I'm not sure if it's wrasse pecking at it. I'm pretty sure I did have a bream bite at one point. Um, it was much, much more rattly and savage, but they just nicked the legs off my crab and uh, I didn't really connect with it properly. Okay, so I'll just talk a bit about what I'm doing and why. Um, the way this mark's laid out, you've got rock features over there that I'm casting up one of my rods up tight to. Sometimes I'm sticking both rods up tight to it. Um, unfortunately, that is where the wrasse live, so I'm, I think I'm getting a fair bit of interest from old, old rubber lips over there, but often you get the bream running along there. I mean, they're covered in mussels, so they're like a little gilt head larder. And the other rod, I'm, I'm drop, at the moment I've got it dropped in right here. And that's just because years ago I caught a good fish doing that exact thing. Like I could see them that day. They were running all along the bottom of the bottom of these rocks along with a load of bass and mullet. And I just dropped one in, not really thinking I was going to get anything because it was so clear. And I just had one scream off and I had a nice gilt. So I've never forgot that and I always uh, make sure to explore this little area ever since. But um, generally, I'm exploring the space a lot, fanning the cast around, tending to keep one rod where I think the hot spot's gonna be up against that rock feature over there, and then sort of prospecting around with the other. Got three ounce leads on that I've hammered flat. There's really no um, swell today. The tide's like a sort of a medium, really. Not big at all, so. I don't need lots of lead to hold bottom and the rigs aren't coming back tangled, so everything's looking good there. So far in this session, I've had quite a lot of um, small finicky indications. I'm not sure what they are. If they're bream, they are playing very, very softly today. But um, what I'm doing is every time I'm getting one of those and it's kind of like not coming to anything, I'll lift the rod up and just inch it back a little bit. And the thinking behind that is that it could just stimulate whatever it is to go and grab it properly. So far, it hasn't worked, but you know, the, the theory behind that approach is sound. It does work usually when there's bream about. So, you know, one of the things that is a bit confusing is when you have a bite, like a good hit and then nothing, what do you do? Do you reel your bait in and check it or leave it out there. I, I like to leave it out there a little bit because I've watched gilt heads on underwater videos and stuff like that. And quite often they'll attack a bait and then they'll go away for a bit and then they'll come back and have another go, go away for a bit before finally committing to eating the food item. So um, it's up to you how long you leave it. A few minutes is probably more than my patience can really stand. But yeah, I think it's a worthwhile tactic. When you miss a bite, don't, don't be tempted to just go, ah, oh, and reel it in straight away because there's a good chance that fish might come back. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're like, oh, that's clearly a trap. I ain't coming back for that. But I think it is worth leaving it out there a little longer, particularly if you suspect you've still got some bait left on the hook.
plenty of signs of spring today. So um, lots of sea trout jumping earlier, which was awesome. Um, nothing really big, but you know, they're always a treat to see, aren't they? Uh, unfortunately, I saw something that wasn't quite so welcome earlier. The seal popped his head out and had a look at me. It's uh, hard not to have conflicting feelings about seals these days, because seeing them more and more, there, there seems to be far more of them than there used to be. Um, the other day, my mates went mullet fishing, and they, there was a seal in there chasing the mullet. And you never used to see them there. Like, I, don't, I don't know if that says something about how many there are, or that they're... There's so many that they're competing for food in places where they never used to go, I'm not sure. But, uh, of course, down here, like any, any that get washed up or any seal pups and stuff like that, they all go straight to the seal sanctuary, rehabilitated, and um, they're released back into the wild. Like there's, there's no natural selection anymore, so I don't know if that's a... I mean, Darwin would say that's a bad thing. <laughs> Certainly not fantastic for us anglers either because I mean they eat I think it's something like six kilos of fish a day that's a lot of fish so uh, yeah it's hard not to feel a little bit bummed out about that but I like I like seals I like to see them but when they're um literally nicking fish off your line that's that's hard to hard to swallow so low tide's come and gone now. We're now um, well into the push. I haven't had a bite for ages, so I think I'm probably not on the fish. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this session up a little bit um, earlier than I originally intended to and um, go and chill out for a bit and then put some more effort into the high tide session. I think um, that's our best chance of success now. All right, so I'm on mark number two now. The wind's picked up a little bit, but uh, the conditions are still looking really good. Lovely colour in the water and the swell's picking up a little bit too, so that might kick the fish into higher gear if they're around. And this is one of my favourite little marks. I did quite a bit that year last year and I filmed a little bit of that gilt head video we put out last year here too. I caught a couple of fish off this, this particular spot. And uh, yeah, well, every time I fished it, I had a bream, or, or at, least, at least one bream, I think. So it was my, um, my number one mark last year. So. Hopefully it does me proud now. Um, it's good to remember that this is really early in, in the year for bream. Uh, I think if I had one today, it would be the earliest I've ever caught one. Although I, I can only remember trying this early once before. And, um, and that was on a mark where it's, it's hit and miss anyway. Like the low water mark I fished this morning, this morning that's, uh, that's hit and miss to be on, on its best day, you know. But, um, Along here, it's a little bit more consistent. So, and I, I, this is where I feel most at home, and I've had most of my better quality fish along this bit where I'm fishing now. So, hopefully, yeah, there'll be a few bream nosing about, and they'll come across my gourmet crab baits. <laughs> Checked all my rigs, changed my hooks, made sure all the there's no nicks in the line or anything like that. It's so important when you're gilt head fishing is um, make sure your tackle's in tip-top condition because. If you have any weakness there, if you, the bream don't find it, the environment will. So yeah, it's in your interest to make sure that all your hooks are as sharp as University Challenge contestant and there's no weaknesses in your line. Okay, that's what it's all about. Beautiful little open coast gilt head bream. It's the earliest one I've ever caught. This is uh, April the 3rd today. So that's, uh, that's a real achievement for, you, for me. I'm well happy with that. So uh, I'll get another bait back out there quick and see if there's any more of his mates around. So no more fish yet. Did have another bite a little while ago, but when I reeled in, the rig was all tangled and in my experience, you almost never catch a bream on a tangled rig. They ain't that daft. So, um, yeah, I missed that one. Just come over high water now. It's starting to ebb. So, uh, another good little slot for a 
chance of a fish. I'm going to keep plugging away and hopefully I'll get another fish to show you. <laughs> Nice bit of bycatch. <laughs> Put up a good account for himself for a bass as well. Yeah, well pleased with that. April's a pretty good month to get around, getting to bass around these parts, so not never a surprise to catch one like this when you bring fish in early season. Yeah, nice fish that. Pop him back now. Okay, so I think that's it for today. The tide's dropped right out now to almost nothing, so. I don't think there's much chance of any more fish. Swell's picking up too, so probably tomorrow this will be booming in here. It'll be not safe to fish even, so good thing I got out and had a go while the getting was good. Uh, really pleased with how it's gone today. I mean, the low water session wasn't that great. Um, did have that rash, but no gilts at all. But that spot does have form for producing nice fish early in the season, so I think it was the right call. It wasn't a mistake to fish that. So can't really blame myself too much for that. Um, I think next time I go, I'll definitely bring a spinning rod and some Dexter wedges and have a go for them sea trout because uh, they're great fun when you get those on spinning gear. But didn't have anything today, so couldn't have a try. But um, this high water session has gone really well. I'm happy with that. My earliest ever gilt ed, if that's the right way to say it, of the year. <laughs> yeah, and um, those two bonus bass as well. So yeah, really happy. Uh, it was nice and pleasantly warm this afternoon, but it's getting really bitter cold now. The sun's going down and that wind's got a right bite to it. So I'm uh, not sorry I'm going home now, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, I'll be back out here soon and hopefully um, the fishing will be even a, even a bit better. So more gilts and I have more fish to show you. So watch the space. If you want to see any of the tactics or tackle that I use today, we did a video all about gilt head fishing last year. Watch that, put a link in the description. That's got all the stuff you, you could want to know about the sort of the nuts and bolts of approaching open coast gilt head fishing. So it's all there. And uh, until next time, see you later. Mm -hmm.